So the first thing that we're gonna do for binding this video is we're gonna go ahead and plug our receiver into the appropriate channels. Now, whenever you're using the FR Sky protocol, the channel mapping is gonna be AETR. That means aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Take note that this is definitely different than spectrum, which is throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. For this reason, you always wanna be careful when plugging in your receivers. The two receivers that we're gonna show you how to bind from today is gonna to be our small micro R84 and our R88 receiver. Both these receivers will have the exact same channel mapping for them. Take note with our R84 receiver that the actual ground plugs are located in the center and that channel one and two are over top of each other and channel three and four are over top of each other. So as you're looking here, we're gonna have channel one and three on the top with the ground ports in the center and we're gonna have channel two and four on the very bottom. The R88 is much easier to identify because all the pins are located vertically and the signal is easily annotated on the side with an S. So ground will be on the bottom and the signal wire, which is gonna be either white or yellow, will be on the top. We're gonna to go ahead and plug into the R84 receiver, which can sometimes be the most confusing. So that way we can address that first. I always like to follow my channel mapping. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is my ailerons. I'm gonna to go to port number one with my ailerons and I'm gonna line up my uh, ground wire in the center. There we go. Next one is elevator. I'm gonna find my elevator connector and I'll plug that in. Again, that's gonna be underneath and my ground wire is gonna line up with my ground wire on the top. Channel three is the throttle. And finally, channel four is the rudder. And again, all of our ground wires are facing towards the center. You're gonna notice since we only have one port for our aileron, I have the servo Y connector. The servo Y connector is included with all of our power packs, so you never have to worry about missing one. Now that we have everything connected, we're gonna go ahead and put our receiver in bind mode. To enter into bind mode, we're gonna hold down on the buttons that are on our R88 or R84 receivers. The bind button for our R88 is located here, and the bind button for our R84 is located right here. I like to just simply pinch the button down and hold it down while I'm plugging in my battery. This may be a good time when you could use one of your friends to help you. Of course, anytime that we're powering this on, we're never gonna have the props on our airplane, just we always wanna make sure those are removed. Now that we have our R88 or R84 receiver blinking, we're gonna go ahead and power on our transmitter. Welcome to HTX, pressure warning, pressure active, low rate. There we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and return and exit that failsafe screen here. You can program failsafe any which way you want. There's many different ways to do that. And for that, that'll be a different video. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna press our model button one time, and we're gonna scroll over till we see setup page. Below our return button, we have page to the right or page to the left. We're gonna hit page to the right. From that point, you can see our setup page, and we can scroll down all the way until we go down to our internal RF. Our internal RF should be selected on multi, and if we go down, most likely if you're using one of our pre-programmed radios, you'll probably see FR Sky X. If you don't see FR Sky X, Press your scrolly ball down one time and scroll until you see it. Once you see FR Sky X, you can then go ahead and select it, scroll down one more time, confirm that you have D16 selected, and from that point, we're gonna go down a couple more lines and we're gonna highlight the bind button. From that, we're gonna press one time, and it's gonna give you a couple different options. It's gonna say telemetry on, telemetry off, and that's gonna be either from channel one through eight or channel nine through 16. We're gonna just let the first one that we have highlighted, telemetry on, be the one that we listen to. And at this point, we're gonna put our attention over towards our receiver that's now flashing. You're gonna notice that you have different codes that are flashing in either the R88 or the R84 receiver. You're gonna see one flash for D8 mode, two flashes for D16, and three flashes for FHSS, which is Futaba. We're looking to bind this at the point when we see two flashes. So all we're gonna simply do is we're gonna wait until we see those two flashes. There it is. And once we press down on that rolly ball, the second we see those two flashes, it's gonna enter into bind mode. It shouldn't take too long, probably about 15 to 20 seconds for this to bind up. And it's just done that. At this point, we can hit the return button and scroll all the way out. Now there is a phenomenon called signal flooding. And that is when you have your receiver located extremely close to your transmitter. You may get the message saying RF signal critical or telemetry lost. That's simply because everything is so close together. For that reason, we'd recommend that you have your plane and your transmitter at least three to four feet apart 
and never power on your airplane and walk out to the flight line. Power on your airplane when you're at the flight line and ready to fly. Our next step is to make sure that our controls on the transmitter are controlling the proper parts of the airplane. So we're gonna to go to our ailerons and you can see our ailerons are moving. We're gonna to go to our rudder and you can see our rudder's moving. And you're also gonna to go to your elevator and make sure your elevator's moving. If any of these are not moving properly, in other words, if I move the ailerons and the elevator moves, there's a good likelihood that one of your connections on your receiver are probably backwards and in the wrong port. You may notice that on this model FT trainer that's preloaded inside your FT pocket transmitter that the rudder moves ever so slightly with your ailerons. That's because we actually put a premix in for you that gives you a little bit more coordination when you're moving the right stick. This is to help new pilots be able to fly better and easier. Now just because your controls are moving and controlling the proper parts of the airplane does not mean that they're moving in the right direction. In our next video, we're gonna cover how to do servo reversing to make sure that our elevator, aileron, and rudder are all going in the proper direction. Now this binding process is the exact same whether you're using our special edition FT pocket radio or whether you're using the pocket radio CC2500 series. Just keep in mind that the profiles that are programmed in the flight test edition are not gonna be the exact same as was programmed in the CC2500 series. This means that if you want some of the features that are pre-programmed in the radio, you're gonna to have to do some mixing, but we can cover that in a later video. So in this video, we covered plugging in your servos into the right receiver ports for the proper channel mapping, and also how to bind your radio to the FT pocket transmitter. Thanks so much for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.